August 26, 2021. A new day has dawned for the channel of the man. And I'm not talking about new day rocks. New day rocks. For almost 10 years, the channel of the club of the man 1993 has existed. And went through a bunch of random stuff at the beginning. Stuff that's not even seen on this channel anymore. But then, of course, eventually came Wolfenstein 3D Let's Plays. And then eventually came WWE Match Cards. To eventually to wrestling reviews and all sorts of content that has come and gone throughout this channel. Now, of course, wrestling has and still will be the main course of this channel. But as I decided to tone down on wrestling content right now, I want to leave some room for other things I enjoy talking about as well. And I think it's been long, long overdue. But I think we are now going to get to some sitcom reviews. And, you know, outside of sports, wrestling, baseball, you name it all, um, my favorite genre for sure is definitely comedy. I'm a huge comedy guy. I'm a huge sitcom person. I'm a fan of all different sitcoms from Family Matters, The Corner Gas, Full House, Fuller House. Um, even I've, I've haven't, haven't gone back to it in a while because, you know, of um, just some things I'm just waiting on for it, but um, I've also started binge-watching Friends, um, and, you know, several others I'm sure I can't think of off the top of my head right now, but I felt if I was going to start reviewing sitcoms on this channel, the most appropriate one for me, personally, to start off with is none other than the all-time classic, nine-season spectacular, Seinfeld. I am a huge Seinfeld fan, as Seinfeld, no doubt about it, is probably my favorite sitcom of all time. My parents and I, my, most of my family actually and I, have watched through the series how many times we have all nine seasons on DVD. We can, for crying out loud, you know, quote different things uh, from Seinfeld off the top of our heads, such as the yada yada yada, the no soup for you with the soup Nazi. Uh, we also got, um, um, you know, uh, many other inside jokes involved in a series we can go back and talk about because it's, of course, Vandalay Industries, Keith Hernandez, um, Gross Bard, uh, so many other references I can think of. Oh, who can I forget? Babu, Babu Bot as well. We'll get to that when we get to the cafe. And also when we, when we get to the finale, many eons down the line. Well, not eons, but, you know, many episodes down the line. Um, we will get to, of course, all those moments as well. A series that was based off of dumb luck. Well, the whole stories of the characters was, was dumb luck, as they joked in a few inside looks that um, that um, the show should have been called Dumb Luck, because the show was written for even though, you know, in some ways the characters did kind of deserve what they got, but then again, they were still the heroes, they still made us laugh. It was just dumb luck. Now, these uh, reviews are not going to be locked. I, the reason why is because I want to watch one full disc at a time, on, so I have them on DVD, and just review all the ones that are on that disc in separate videos. And it'd be much easier to do that and upload them all than just, you know, review them one by one by one by one live, basically. You know what I mean? Um, who knows? Maybe much I will change my mind on that. Who knows? But just the way to keep this rolling. Now, this first one I am going to be doing, you know, just by itself. The rest of season one, of course, I will watch and then, you know, do the reviews. But these will also be sharing some notes about some behind-the-scenes trivia, inside looks, stuff with some bloopers maybe and whatnot, and a bunch of things. And especially this opening one for the first ever episode, The Seinfeld Chronicles, also known as Good News, Bad News, also, with this first episode is actually known as as well, after they, you know, um, cleaned it up a little, not clean it up, but just, you know, just like, season it up a little bit uh, with, you know, the new um, intro music and whatnot and everything, the graphics, um, the changes they made when they actually, you know, moved forward with more episodes. Um, um, I'm going to be you know, incorporating, you know, all that trivia behind the scenes as well because there's a lot of interesting stuff you've learned from watching the inside looks on the DVDs as well. And also I'm going to look up trivia of it on, like, IMDb and whatnot. So, with me being a fan of all that, I'm definitely going to share that in all of these reviews. So, of course, this first one is going to be a little bit longer than most of the reviews because it's, it's incorporating some more behind-the-scenes facts, as you can see. So, without further ado, guys, let's giddy up and get ready to go because these pretzels are making me thirsty for some Seinfeld reviews.
The very first episode. So, before we get into the actual first episode of Seinfeld, let's just talk about the backstory about how Seinfeld first came to be. From the How It Began documentary, the making of documentary with Seinfeld. Um, in the early 80s, I believe it was, um, Jerry Seinfeld was making appearances on The Tonight Show and whatnot. NBC, of course, had their eyes on him, you know, saying, you know, this, you know, this guy's got some type of talent. We'd like to see him actually be on TV of some sorts. Um, and of course, they were Jerry was approached by NBC executives about maybe doing some type of a, you know, of a special or whatnot. Uh, and um, it kind of, of course, you know, ties into the future story that we had uh, from the breakthrough season, season four, with that that season arc for the story from beginning to end with. Jerry Seinfeld himself in his own in his own um, sitcom, his character is writing a pilot as well, and they played it kind of off exactly how him and Larry David would eventually come to full terms, um, and um, and how they would eventually become successful. Even though, of course, that pilot, the the Jerry show, didn't get picked up until the finale. Until the rest, well, we'll get to that. We get to the finale, you know, further down the line. But, um, obviously, you know, uh, Jerry was looking for a writer, and uh, he knew of, you know, Larry David, who's good friends with, they met at some type of party or whatnot, I think he said, and, uh, Larry David does some stuff for, like, Saturday Night Live, he does some stuff for Fridays, and just other things, too. Even though Larry David, you learn throughout, especially with this making of documentary, Larry David either, like, wanted it to all be his way, or he didn't think as highly of himself at times as, like, you know... As good as he definitely turned out to be, for sure. Um, so, they, you know, just sat in coffee shops. They did, you know, their stand-up routines and whatnot. They sat in the booths and went on talked. And then, thinking about what this could be. And originally, they wanted Seinfeld to be a 90-minute special for when, I think it was Saturday Night Live was off. Kind of like being just like a one-camera show. Just basically, you know... Uh, having Jerry do some of his stand-up material and just, like, following... Well, more so, like, following Jerry around. It was basically going to be, like, a 90-minute special, like, a day in the life of Jerry Seinfeld, it seemed like. With Jerry, you know, you know, doing his stand-up and having it all incorporate with what's going on. It sounded good, except Jerry was honest and said, I don't think this could be... Um, we can get 90 minutes out of this. He did maybe, like, a half hour. So instead of, like, a 90-minute, like, you know, once once or twice a month special, whatever heck it was supposed to be, he thought, oh, this would, I'd be more better, this people be rough, like a 30 minute thing, so now we're getting to like a sitcom. But it's like, okay, you know, it's, you know, it's gonna be a longer term thing, basically, you know, with like, more episodes, than just, you know, just like, a once a month thing. Um, so, you know, Larry David and Jerry, you know, continue to stay in touch about it. Um, they, I think that one day they were walking through like a store and like making comments about like the food, what they're whatnot. Um, and that's where Larry David, like George, made the comment of in the um, in the coffee shop um, when Jerry was putting together together the um, the the pilot script. Um, he's like, yeah, this should be what the TV shows about. It's like, what do you mean? Like just us talking, just having just talking about nonsense and whatnot. Well, how's that the show? Because it's on TV, it's entertaining, it's about nothing. But, of course, you know, trying to get that across to, you know, NBC executives wasn't quite, you know, going through. Of course, they show up to the meeting, and then, you know, Larry David, exactly like George, basically saying that this is the show, we're not going to change it and whatnot, just like they did in the pitch episode. Um, and, of course, you know, the negotiating back and forth and whatnot. And then, of course, you know, Larry David was, and a lot of people at first didn't think the show was going to go far. So, of course, then there was, you know, then finally, you know, after, you know, executives, you know, even though the whole time there was some head scratching and whatnot, executives still, like, saw something in Jerry. And even though they weren't getting the best reviews and whatnot, even though there was some kinks to knock out, they still saw something in um, in Jerry Seinfeld um, to, you know, hope him being a big successor. So, eventually, you know, they started casting the characters. Um, of course, um, Larry David was basically, you know, didn't want to actually, you know, play the, any actual, um, um, 
series. So, of course, they cast a character named George Costanza, who I heard was apparently was supposed to be named Bennett at first. I, think. I can't remember what it was, but he was supposed to be another stand-up comedian. George, being a funny guy, though, ended up not being a stand-up comedian. He was, you know, well, started in real estate. Um, and, of course, they um, they had several, you know, people they, 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 um, they auditioned. And then uh, Jason Alexander, of course, came in. I think Jason had more of a background in, like, theater and whatnot. Um, but him and Jerry just had instant chemistry hit off pretty good. Now, Jason Alexander, though, he didn't think he was going to get the part. And the reason why was because one of the other, you know, finalists that was um, in line for the George character was Larry Miller. And Larry Miller, in real life, was Jerry's best friend. So George was like, I mean, I'm sorry, Jason was like, okay, there's there's no way. There's literally no way that, um, that I'm going to get this part because, you know, Larry Miller is Jerry's best friend. And, you know, not he gets on the plane, heads back to New York, and not until he gets back to New York, he got the call, said they, he got the part, which he was surprised. And, of course, there was Kramer, who originally was supposed to be called Kessler. And he was called Kessler in the, um, in the opening, um, in, the, in the Seinfeld Chronicles. But um, his, his character was based off of Larry David's former neighbor, uh, Kenny Kramer, who, you know... Didn't, wasn't really, you know, didn't really have his footing really in life, was, you know, kind of like sitting in his apartment, you know, living a little bit like a bum, but, you know, eventually would find, like, some success and whatnot. Um, and he would just, you know, just walk in to, to Larry's apartment whenever he wanted to, you know, just... But they were still good buddies, good pals and whatnot. They still hung out did stuff. So, you know, Larry's like, you know, I could easily base a character off of him. Um, but, of course, here's the thing. They didn't want to call him Kramer because they knew if they called him Kramer that, you know, Kenny Kramer obviously would, you know, go after him and sue. Um, so originally they were going to call him Kessler. And they called Kramer Kessler not only in the first, in the Seinfeld Chronicles, that one time you hear in the spot where um, Jerry was beefing about how he um, spoiled the Mets game for him. Uh, but they also call, referred him as Kessler in, it was in, later in that Betrayal episode. The one where they, they did, like, the backwards episode. They jokingly, like, went to the day Jerry first moved in and had him and Kramer first meet. And, uh, Jerry's like, you're Kessler, right? Uh, no, it's actually Kramer. But they actually refer him to as Kessler there. It's kind of like a, you know, a little bit of like a throwback there, which is pretty cool. Um, but of course there was just something about that name Kramer that just stood out. And, you know, they were insistent. And finally, you know, eventually, even though Kenny Kramer did go kind of nuts... Make it made with that, you know, like that Kenny Kramer, the real Kramer bus tour, or whatnot. Kind of where he got the idea eventually of the Jay Peterman uh, bus tour, um, and that episode where um, Elaine was working on the biography for Jay Peterman, and um, Kramer was basically you know lending him his stories, and then Kramer goes nuts with that bus ride tour, whatever that it's called, wherever he had, um, you know, that's kind of what Kenny Kramer did. But eventually they worked out a deal, and you know they got the name Kramer. Now, of course, the original who was not in the first episode, which was Julia Louis Dreyfus. Well, I'm sorry. Back up for a second. Back up for a second. Uh, I forgot to mention about the um, um, how the casting of uh, Kramer. Um, Jerry instantly um, thought of Michael Richards. Um, Michael Richards had already been on Fridays and, and whatnot with um, Larry David. He liked Michael Richards, but I forgot. There's one or two other people he he had Larry had in mind, but Jerry was persistent on Michael Richards. And, of course, you know, came in and, you know, I think you did, like, a handstand and before he walked out of the interview. And it's like, well, if you want funny, so Mike Ward just got the part there. Now, originally, the original female character for Seinfeld was supposed to be Claire, um, that waitress in the first scene of the Seinfeld Chronicles, who, I forgot who actually played her, but eventually her character was dropped after, after the pilot. And then that's what they basically said, you know, if you want to keep this going, um, you have to have a full female character. And just having a waitress in a coffee shop was not going to cut it. So that's when, you know, they brought in um, uh, Elaine, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, um, who obviously was is Jerry's ex-girlfriend. You know, things didn't work out romantically. Well, the ending of season two, we'll get to that later on. Um uh, basically, there's based off like someone even like Larry David had been like it went out with didn't work out, but they became you know good friends, um, 
you know, for the rest of their lives, basically. Well, as, at the time, at least. Um, but, of course, they still based Elaine off of some of um, Larry's ex-girlfriends, I believe it was. So that's how the main uh, characters came to be. And like I said, they, um, you know, obviously the show wasn't really getting picked up after the pilot. Um, they thought that Jerry was a weak lead, which was, you know, truth from when they did the actual uh, Jerry pilot eventually. Um, obviously, at the end, it had some kinks to kick out, but, you know, they still thought there was something there. So they signed them off to four more episodes. And no one thought that this show was going to continue. After the four episodes, um, they kind of sat around for a little bit. Eventually they got 13. And then Larry David's like, holy smokes. He goes, I, he goes after that pilot, I thought it was Jerry and I going to shake hands and we're not going to see each other for 15 more years. That didn't happen. And of course, there were some times where Larry David wanted to walk out. Because like, again, even though he was the writer, there was the director and, and whatnot who was, like, basically trying to, you know, change things up, and he's like, well, what's the point of doing, of me writing this show if you're going to do my job for me anyways, basically? Which, I can see also why that is a little bit of a turnoff. Especially if we're watching wrestling, and seeing people who want to, like, you know, put their own creativity in this, yet there's someone else above them who's making it about them. It's like, then why are we here, basically? I kind I really get why Larry David was like that. Um... They, did, they eventually got renewed for 13 more episodes. And in, in the first the first season, um, a turning point that um, that Larry David said, there was a couple of turning points for him, he mentioned, um, which we'll get to, of course, we get to those episodes. Um, in the robbery episode, there was a way he had written things, uh, while well, there was some errors and whatnot, which I'm sure we'll probably get to when we listen to the inside look for the robbery, um, where uh, basically, you know, he gave a good impression and he was they were told if the show gets picked up you're going you're going to be the executive producer and in the bus boy episode there was this philosophy that larry liked whenever um antonio um the bus boy and um eddie the guy that elaine was seeing that episode like clashed together they were kept separate apart but it clashed together at the end that seemed to be like a trend where like all plots of the stories of that episode seemed to come together which is cool with the, the dude so as well. Of course, sometimes, especially Elaine, I think as well, had several of them where it's like she was like oblivious to, um, to like one of the biggest stories. Like for example, in the panty remark, she was oblivious to that to the panty remark um, that Jerry had made towards his girlfriend, and then she ends the episode by walking out saying, "I'm going to go." Uh, full up the panties that my mother laid out for me or whatnot, and then everybody's shocked, which just created quite a reaction, and it was hilarious, but of course talk about that when we get to that um, but eventually, of course, you know even though they were slowly working out the kinks, they got renewed for a 22 episode season for season 3 um, so that's basically the behind the scenes look um, how um, everything came to be so, like I said, this is probably going to be one of those longer episodes because the longer re reviews of this series uh, because, you know, we have the behind-the-scenes facts. Um, now, to talk about the actual first episode, uh, the Seinfeld Chronicles, which I think is a basic, was a nice way to set up, you know, what they're looking for for the series and just, you know, seasoning some things out, both from, you know, the characters and both, like, you know, behind-the-scenes as writers. Um, like I said before, um, in the introduction, uh, this, this, this whole series, and they even said at one point, this should have been called Dumb Luck. This whole show could have been, been called Dumb Luck, because just a lot of things just, was just, it was Dumb Luck. Like, not all of it was, you know, stuff that they could control or whatnot, like, in this episode. Something very relatable. Um, Jerry had gone to, I think it was Lansing, Michigan, for, for a show, and uh, he met a girl there. And she called him and said that she was going to be in New York for a few days for some type of conference. I think she was like a political science teacher or something like that at college. Um, and, you know, it was obviously a question of, like, you know, what could this be? What could this be, basically? You know, does this mean romance? Does this mean, you know, oh, it was just a friend? You know, just an acquaintance? Who knows what it meant? So, um, uh, this episode started with Jerry and George sitting in the coffee shop. Um, and uh, first off, they were talking about, you know, the buttons on, on the shirt. 
um, which actually would actually be the fun the final lines in the in the finale um, as well um, and then they started talking and then Jerry mentions how he met this girl and how you know they were um, how she was gonna be in town for a few days um, but there wasn't really George was getting the bad signals thinking that okay this isn't what you think it is basically um, and he was asking uh, Claire the waitress for you know advice um, on you know what she thought of it as well and she and she even like you know what she explained they basically saying that oh you know you're not getting any you're not going to get any romantic um, connections out of this one but Jerry still feels like something was there and then he didn't began to feel like, oh, this girl's not coming, it's no use, and whatnot. Um, and then later on, um, Jerry was at his apartment watching uh, the Mets game, and he had not seen it, so he had taped it. And then some, you know, um, some tele, tele, um, telemarketer called him as Kramer came in looking for meat for his bread. Um, and he sat down, he instantly, of course, as Kramer always would, you know, Kramer was, again, always a character also who, you know, opened his mouth and said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Such as, you know, in future episodes, whenever um, George dated that girl who, who, obviously, who everybody thought needed a nose job, but nobody wanted to say it except for Kramer. Or whenever, um, in the Hamptons, one of my favorite episodes, why well, can't we get that one? Oh, that was going to be so much fun to talk about. Um, uh, in that episode, we have, um, Everyone except for George got to see George's girlfriend topless before George did, basically, and George was upset about that. Um, and um, this, you know, and of course, you know, Kramer had to blab it to George, and you know, everybody's like, "Don't say anything," but Kramer blew it. Um, so then, um, so then, basically, Kramer was like, "So am I still not allowed to be in your apartment?" He goes, "I oh, don't worry about it. That girl's not coming now." But then, Laura did call, and she said. Um, and she said that, hey, I can't find a decent hotel room. Would it be okay if I spent the night at your place and you picked me up from the airport? So instantly, that's Jerry thinking, okay, maybe this is something good here. George, you know, still, you know, thinking that, like, you know, well, now he's saying something about this and signals in there. And Jason Alexander said at first, he tried playing the character kind of more of like a Woody Allen type person. Um... And, um, but then when he took, after a while until he realized, uh, basically Larry David talked to him saying, you know, this character's based off of me, he stopped the whole Woody Allen stuff. Um, and also in this episode, uh, I didn't realize this also, but Kramer originally was supposed to have a dog. I think his name was Ralph. And Jerry wanted to do some, like, stand-up bid in, in the episode about dogs. But, uh, the writers thought that it was didn't really fit the story so they cut it and then eventually though uh but they still had kramer have a dog come in and, and attack george but that was the only time we saw him and then of course you know they have jerry bring in like a like, like a cot for laura to sleep on uh because he was just like i don't know if i should you know jump too far and say oh you're gonna share the bed and whatnot but um they get to the airport George goes with them, and they're, and George's going over, like, you know, what all could be good signs, like, you know, the dropping the bags first, and going straight, uh, to Jerry, or, you know, um, not dropping the bags, the bad sign, and whatnot, or, you know, like, you know, the, the, the hug, and whatnot, uh, but Laura did come out, and I'll be real, this one looked like she was a little bit older than Jerry, to me, she didn't seem like, when, the way Jerry Hydrogen came up, I'm like, oh, looks more like, um, the woman was not one of the best-looking um, ladies that I think Jerry had gone out with in the series, in my opinion. I just, again, I just didn't think, you know, the hype was, the, we, we, it was one of the things, I'm not saying she was ugly, but the hype for her, like, when she came out, it's like, oh, it's like, okay. I don't know if that's insulting. If that is, I do apologize. Um, but uh, Jerry, um, you know, the, the lady basically came behind and, you know, did the whole covering the eyes and the whole guess who thing. And George was completely confused, didn't know what to expect. They go back to the apartment and obviously, you know, um, she says, oh, will I be able to spend a little more, will I be able to spend the next couple of nights here, if you don't mind, after my conference, we maybe we can go for like a nice boat ride. 
And Jerry's like, okay, okay, thinking George is nuts. He, he, he thought I was getting bad to say this wasn't going to work. The phone rings, and it's for Laura. Laura's on the phone with this guy and saying something. Well, Laura's on the phone with someone, and she was just like, okay, knock that off. You're not going to, don't, don't talk to that. It's not what you think it is. And she gets out the phone, and she's like, don't ever be engaged. The whole concept of dumb luck crushed right there. Jerry's not winning the woman, and she he was not, you know, scoring on her, unfortunately. Um, she was engaged, but then afterwards, she was just awkwardly saying, so, like, so I can't wait for getting that bow. Jerry's like, yeah, yeah, the bow. And it's just like, it's dumb luck. And it just sets the stage. Again, you know, just that normal, you know, young adult thing where it was like, Oh, you know, it's like, you know, what could this be? What could this be? And then it ends up being it's not what it looked like it was going to be. It was just a woman needed a place to stay, stay at a friend's house, even though it was a female that Jerry was interested in. Unfortunately, you know, it was not the case. And, yep, that's it for this first review, my first sitcom review and my first Seinfeld review for sure. Um, I also forgot to mention how one comment I know I know um, that was mentioned uh, by NBC executives whenever this um, whenever they first started they thought that this was a little too Jewish and a little too New York. Um, they definitely um, said that they did you know tone back on those um, topics a little bit that way you know they could relate to much a little bit more of a bigger audience and you know there's like young men just you know typical you know life of like you know these gaps in society. I think you know. It set the stage pretty well for, you know, how this series was. Again, just a bunch of random nonsense, random conversations. And, yes, even some things that might be a little more serious. But, for the most part, it was that awkward thing where it's like, you know, they had to be careful with how they did it. But they somehow had to make it funny and in, like, a dumb luck sense. Which gets that later on. Also, another fun fact I forgot to mention. Apparently, Heidi Swedberg who eventually would play George's fiance Susan Ross. She apparently auditioned for um, Claire, the waitress, apparently. I did not know that. And also, Julia Lewis-Dreyfus has mentioned that she has never watched a pilot episode and didn't plan on it. I don't know if she changed her mind since that interview, but she didn't. Because this is only one of three episodes, I think, which she was in. This one and the two, um, the two-parter of the trip at the beginning of season four. Um, but yeah, a lot of trivia, a lot of stuff. Like I said, I don't think all of these, uh, reviews are going to be, uh, this long. Like I said, with, you know, the behind the scenes stuff and like the, how it began and everything and whatnot, it was necessary. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Again, like I said, I'm going to be doing like a batch of them, like, like watching, um, episodes, watching inside looks, and some deleted scenes and whatnot, just some other trivia. Again, there's a lot that I have access to for Seinfeld. Like I said, it's my favorite comedy of all time, um, and there's a lot to talk about. You can definitely tell that it's exciting, and um, if you haven't watched it yet, I definitely recommend watching Seinfeld. So, guys, as always, what are your thoughts on this first episode review? What were your thoughts on the first episode of Seinfeld, The Seinfeld Chronicles, also known as Good News bad news. Did I miss any f- interesting trivia, guys? Make sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Slap a like on the video. Subscribe for more content on my channel. Follow me on Twitter at DemandAirRonny3. Until then, guys, I'm checking out. I'll see y'all later. Have a good rest of your day. Peace out, everybody, and don't get hit with any uh, dumb luck. Yada yada. Peace out.